Hello friends, it's me, the handsomest there ever was. Welcome back to Casa Mojo Dojo, and more importantly, welcome back to the guide series. In today's episode, we'll be departing the Mojo Dojo and search worldwide of a stronghold. While looking for a stronghold, I got some tips and tricks I guarantee you didn't know. Eventually, once we find that boy, we're gonna crack it cold open and jump down into it. Loot it all. In honor of the very final episode on the first leg of the series, before we take on the end, I need you to smash that like button. It will ensure a smile on Bonzo's face, my face, and... And, well, I just think it will be mighty nice of you. Let's do this. Last episode, we had a busy one. We got the building, finally, at long last, and we actually did the very final big project that we had to do over at the starter base. We built a brewing stand with a blaze rod that looked very similar to that one right there. Inside of that thing, we ended up cooking up a couple potions, all thanks to this fuel right here. Mm -hmm. Early game, mid game, late game, I don't care where you are, blaze rod and blaze potter, they are some of the most useful things in all of Minecraft. Like we talked all about last episode, you use them to make potions. Like we will talk about eventually on our great Minecraft journey, blaze rods are also one of the best fuel sources in the entire game. And perhaps most specifically important for us today, if we take blaze rods and a couple other ingredients and smash them at a sonic speed together inside of the crafting table, we'll end up with a handy little item called the Eye of Ender. Today, the Eye of Ender, well, it's really gonna be our ticket to everything, to be honest. If you're looking to go to the end in Minecraft, you know, open up a whole dimension, explore, take out a dragon, all that stuff, then you need to find a structure called the Stronghold. Now, technically, there is a little command that you could run, it looks something like that, to find a stronghold, nice and easily. Run that command inside of your world, that if you're on Minecraft Java, tap there, hit enter, and all of a sudden, poof, you're sent to the local stronghold. Now, this stronghold, this is one of the older structures in Minecraft. This is essentially the gateway to the next dimension. A stronghold is composed of a bunch of different rooms locked together by hallways. In every single Minecraft to Java world, you will have exactly 128 strongholds spread across those things in a ring formation. Over at Minecraft Bedrock Edition, strongholds are actually a whole lot more infinite. Now we'll talk a little bit more about the finer details of this thing once we find it in our world, but for the first way you could find a stronghold, there you go. Good luck. Not that you need it if you're doing that. Though Stronghold Generation is slightly different on Minecraft Bedrock and Minecraft Java, actually locating this thing is going to be exactly the same. If you're looking to find a Stronghold in Survival without any commands, it's all Eye of Ender. If you've never done this before, I recommend getting more than 16 Eye of Ender. If you've done it before, 16 should probably be fine. Now getting the Eye of Ender, well a couple episodes back we made an Enderman farm in the Nether. That will help out big time. After that, head over to the Nether Fortress, take out some Blaze, get the Blaze Rod, and then you're ready to go. Other end hunting supplies, of course, maybe a bed. We're gonna leave the base, so you might want to be able to like skip nighttime and uh, well, really, that's it. Like, I guess a map if you're if you're mapping, maybe a spyglass if you're you're spying. To be honest, it's all really in those things right there. Now, Bonzo, sweet Bonzo, I know you want to come desperately, but you didn't join me for crafting the thing, so that means you get to stay here and watch over the cows again. Good luck with that. This is an emergency interruption. Before we get too far into the action today, down below, drop your number one stronghold finding tip or looting tip. Ah, the good old fashioned Eye of Ender. Just like the stronghold itself, this is one of the older items in Minecraft. It's also kind of interesting. It's completely unique. Nothing else does quite what it does. We're gonna use the Eye of Ender in survival to locate the stronghold, but also to eventually open the portal too. Step number one to using an Eye of Ender is get an Eye of Ender. After that, after you become that overachiever, you're going to want to find an open space. Now, this open space, it could be like a plains biome, it could be the top of a tree, or if you're situated in a forest like I am, a body of water isn't bad. After you find that open space, hold the eye of Ender and use it. When you use it, you want to keep your eye on it. It might go behind you, whatever. Once you throw it, though, it's going to go up into the air about 12 blocks away from you and hover in a general direction. Now I got lucky that time. The eye of Ender went up into the air in like this general direction, then popped and fell down. If it falls back down, you're gonna wanna grab that thing. You got an 80% chance that the eye of Ender, after you throw it, will pop into an item form. Unfortunately, and that leaves about 20%. 20% chance it pops, breaks, and it's done so, gone forever. I threw the all seeing, all knowing eye, and it went off in this general direction, the direction that I'm currently backing up in. That's the way we need to go, at least for now. So the Eye of Ender in Minecraft, it essentially works as a locator item, almost like a, a stronghold compass, if you will. The Eye of Ender, when you use one inside of your world, is going to float up into the air in the general direction of the closest stronghold. 
To be honest, this is getting into the nitty gritty details here, but on Minecraft's Java Edition, strongholds generate in a ring formation inside of your world. Long story short, from world spawn, there should be a stronghold in some direction, within like a thousand to three thousand blocks somewhere. One thousand to three thousand blocks. Hey, it sounds like a lot, but I think this will actually probably go relatively quickly. So I've been running for a little bit of a ways, but I kind of lost my way. If you lose your way, no big deal. We stop, we throw the eye at Bender, and I can see that it's still going in this direction. Please pop. Oh, yeah, yeah. You popped. You're beautiful. They're all going to do that for me today. So two things. So take into account the fact that you might potentially have to go like 3,000 blocks, and take into account the fact that you got a 20% chance of losing an eye of Ender. Although that's really going to mean that you don't want to span these things. Instead, it's a whole lot smarter to cover some distance before you throw another one. Typically, I would say like 100 to 200 blocks, or maybe like a, a better way to measure it is use landforms. I threw it somewhere, like in the forest over there, and I know this way I could see like, I think a village and a swamp. Mm hmm. I remember you. Instead of just throwing another eye of Ender right now to see if I'm still going in the right direction, what I'll probably do instead, in fact, definitely do, is move past this village and maybe like over the hill. Then I'll try again. No! So sad and tragic. The wolves, they've all trapped themselves into a pit in a hole. Taking out every single sheep friend, massacring them along the way. How could you do this? Disgusting savages. Oh! Beautiful. Beautiful. Shimmering emeralds. That's wonderful. So while searching for a stronghold today, every couple hundred blocks or so, when we get a good clearing, like an opening spot where we can see a lot, we're gonna throw an eye event. The Eye of Ender is a very, very intriguing item. Not only does it mysteriously know where the stronghold is, but it can also go clean through items. Check that, that thing somehow, I have no clue how, but it, it went clean through the blocks. So this is an interesting part of the world. It looks like we have yet another village. Never saw that one before. And we have a gigantic swamp pile. 100%, I'm gonna have to come back over to the swamp pile at some point and check it out. I like to see if we have a witch hut inside of it. On my to-do list inside of this world, a witch farm is like pretty hot. It's been a long time since I built a witch farm and they're actually like crazy useful. You can get some really good things from them. Oh, whoa, no way, no way. Moving up on top of this hill, looking around a little bit. That's another village over there. Now that might be one that we went to before, but still one village right over there, one right there. I don't know guys. I thought they made the villages generate farther away. That doesn't look very far to me at all. <laughs> I love it. Now, speaking of villages, if you're playing on Minecraft Bedrock and you're looking for a stronghold, all of it's basically exactly the same. Use an Eye of Ender. However, on Minecraft Bedrock, this stronghold is typically located below a village, so that could be a big sign that you are getting close. But on, uh, on Java, it's not really like that. Eye of Ender, you still lead me out this way and off to the great ocean, too. Ugh. I hope this isn't buried underwater. All right, so this might be pushing my luck, but before I get to the ocean, I want to see if maybe it's not gonna, oh, come on, you're gonna send me still to the ocean? Oh no, and even worse, from, from the hill over there that I threw it from, they will only go about 12 or so blocks, but I, I lost my eye, and it definitely fell. So this is where the whole 12 block thing comes into play. When you throw an eye vendor, it will only travel about 12 blocks or so from you. So if you can backtrack to wherever you threw that eye vendor, and then kind of like start counting 12 or so blocks, you might be able to find a little sneaky lad hiding. <laughs> Not so fast. Anyways, oceans. If your stronghold happens to be located under an ocean, it's going to be good and bad. Bad because, I mean, it's a lot of water. You might have to swim down pretty deep. But also, maybe good news, because if the ocean is deep enough, it might almost be exposed on the, the bottom of the water. At dawn, I guess we sail. Now, searching for a stronghold in a body of water is essentially the same as it is on land. However, I can offer you this boat trick again. Have I told you about this before? I believe this is Minecraft Java only, but if you get your FOV just right, you can kind of see right through the water. If you can see through the water, you can look on the bottom of the water for suspiciously square land formations. If you're looking around for a stronghold and you start seeing weird square boxes basically popping out of the ocean floor, I'm not really seeing any here, but if you do, that could be a big sign. Aha! Uh aha! -huh. Uh -huh, aha! Uh -huh. I don't know if you saw what just happened. But the Eye of Ender turns straight towards an ocean monument. No, don't do this to me. No, you better not. All right, so I don't know if you saw what happened, though. But for the longest time, I was heading out like that direction. I threw the eye and it turned. 
Once the eye begins to turn, that might very well mean that you are getting closer to your goal destination. Now, once the eye turned and went into the water, it probably sunk down to the bottom of the water. Gotta wait for this thing to float back up, hopefully. Any minute now. Well, lads, uh, I don't know. I don't know where the eye went, but I want to see if I need to keep going. Yes, I do need to keep going that way. Okay, and this time... No! That's what I was talking about. No. So now at this point, considering the fact that my eyes of Ender have taken such a sharp turn from the direction they were leading me before, I might want to consider start throwing them a little bit more frequently. Because eventually, it's gonna go the complete opposite direction. Aha! There you are. Not so fast. So now my eye of Ender, it has changed direction, but it still went high up into the sky. What I'm gonna want to do is turn around, go back over to where that eye went, go a little past it, and throw it again. And see what happens. If the Eye of Ender continuously continues to go up into the sky, you're not too close yet, but you are getting closer, considering the fact that it's changed direction. So back in the boat, and we'll move a little bit over. Maybe this kelp patch over here. We throw the eye, and it still goes up. Seems like it's got to be right over here somewhere. We'll go ahead and sail a little bit more, and maybe here. Uh-huh. Still. Okay. No. 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 Backtracking one final time, this has to be it. We throw the Eye of Ender, and this time, it went nowhere except down. Once the Eye of Ender goes down, that means you found the chunk. On Minecraft Java, if I hit F3 and G, it might be kind of tricky to tell because we're right on the border. So, I'm gonna go ahead and throw another one, but I don't really recommend doing that. I throw it, and as we can see, it's going right on this chunk border right there. That's why I don't recommend doing it. You might lose it. When the Eye of Ender is finding your stronghold, it's going to actually find the entrance chunk or the corner of the chunk where the entrance should be. But did you know there's a specific way to find exactly dead center on the entrance? And so at this point, no matter what, what I wanna do is not lose the entrance corner. This is gonna be a little bit more difficult to pull off because we're inside of water, but we can still do it. Since we're dealing with a little bit of water, something that might not be a bad idea to craft, maybe have a little bit extra, is gonna be fence gates. They'll make air. To find the exact entrance of your stronghold, once you found your stronghold chunk, we need to find specific chunk coordinates. Check out this grade right here. You see those parentheses right there? Those are going to be the chunk coordinates. Inside of a different world, a land that is slightly more dry, we have the exact same thing going on. The coordinates inside of those brackets right there are your chunk coordinates. Inside of every single Minecraft chunk, we have a starting spot. The starting spot is going to be marked and those coordinates by zero, a number in the middle, and then zero. So inside of this chunk, this is zero. If I start moving this way, my X coordinate is going to go up, but also the X of the chunk coordinate is going to go up. Did that make sense? So I got one. If I move back over to the starting and go the other way, that's going to be the Z coordinate. So inside of this chunk, that spot right there is going to be 0, 0. This is going to be 1, 0. Over here, this is going to be 0, 1. Over here, this would be 1, 1, if that makes sense. And meanwhile, in Minecraft Bedrock, the same system might exist, but it's a whole lot more difficult to check out in specific because you don't have this hook. Back inside of the guide, at this corner where the pearls seem to have been going to, if I check the chunk coordinates, we have 15 something in the middle and then zero. That's wrong. That means I marked the wrong chunk. The eye of enter will always go to a zero, zero spot inside of a chunk. Considering the fact that this is zero, zero, that means this has to be the stronghold chunk. Eye of enter always goes to chunk coordinate zero, zero. Entrance of the stronghold is always at chunk coordinate four, four. That means from zero, zero, if we walk one, two, three, four, and then from this spot, we go one, two, three, four. If I dig straight down right here, that should theoretically be the middle of the entrance. Another thing you could do is from the zero, zero, you could just go one diagonal, two diagonal, three diagonal, and then a fourth diagonal. That's where we're gonna wanna dig down. Now, when I dig down, because we're in water here, if I put a fence gate, that's gonna stop the water. That'll make it a little bit easier. We'll start it off by digging a couple blocks. So it goes like that, lads. We're set up for potential pure profit. Now, I don't me a good Minecraft trick or two. This trick should work every single time, but if it doesn't work this time, that's going to be insanely embarrassing, and we're going to forget that I ever said anything just a minute ago. It never happened at all. From this point in the game, all I should theoretically need to do is dig straight down, or double dig down, which is where you stand on the border of two blocks and dig down, and that'll drop us down into the center of the entrance of the stronghold. But I guess we'll see. So now, at this point, though, I've lost my fence gate, and I've hit deep slate. Once you've hit Deep Slate, it's not necessarily a bad sign or a good sign or anything. The stronghold can generate all the way down to the bottom of the world. 
So, that 4-4 trick that I talked about. If I stayed lined up, I would be right here. If I dig this out or a couple blocks, I should fall right down the middle of the entrance of the staircase. We're in, lads. Lads, we're in. Hey, yo, yo, hold up real quick. Let's actually break this fence gate. With the fence gate right here, I'm going to immediately fall into the staircase. But I can set up an easy way in and out. Now that we've made it into the stronghold champions, the tone of the episode had shifts. Immediately, I need you to mark your coordinates where you came in or dig a staircase out. Back inside of a different world here, the stronghold is composed of a couple different pieces. We're going to have rooms, and then we're going to have corridors to link the rooms together. The chests inside of the stronghold can kind of be found all over the place, in the rooms, but also the hallways. However, the chests, unless you have some kind of weird generation situation going on inside of your world, will never be found inside of the staircases. You're going to have to be careful inside of your stronghold. You're going to have a lot of long, dark hallways. I highly recommend moving through this thing and dropping torches down as you go. Every single time you find a door, what I like to do is either break the door or leave it open. If it's left open, then I know for sure that I've been there before. To help myself later on down the road when I'm trying to leave this place, I'm going to put blocks right there. That's going to make it really obvious that this spiral staircase is the spiral staircase that leaves the fort. Now, loot of this structure. Oh, boy, I have so much fun with this. I like to explore structures. Oh, boy, I'm feeling it. Today, we're going to find a library, and inside of that library chest, we will find the most beautiful thing in the world. Hmm, hmm, <laughs> hmm, so generation of the structure seems a little bit busted, a little bit strange and broken. Over this way, it looks like there's light. If you're looking for good loot, or maybe the portal room, so you can like, ooh, buddy, stop it. If you're looking for good loot, maybe looking for a library, a portal room, something like that, then it's a great idea to head for the light. Hmm, so many mobs down there. Skeleton spawner at a stronghold? Perhaps, maybe? So many mobs, so many mobs, so many mobs, skeleton spawner at the stronghold. No way, oh, no way. Okay, this is a slightly dangerous situation. A little bit precarious, precarious, if you could, if you would. Why do you all have enchanted bows? You're gonna give them all to me one by one. I will move slowly and carefully into this room with food on the hot bar and skeleton spawner. Oh, this is one of the best finds that I could have ever found inside of this structure. Oh, this is truly a dream come true and perfect. And it's completely busted up the stronghold generation. It shouldn't look like that. <laughs> but we just... Lads, I think I'm going to finally make a stronghold base. I think we're going to finally make a stronghold ba base. I'm in awe. Shock and disbelief. All right, so real quick, we'll move down here and make sure this is nice and safe. Considering the fact that I just found one of the literal best strongholds in the world, we need to make sure no creepers will go back over to where that thing is. Inside of the stronghold, you're going to find staircases that will go down, and sometimes you'll find flat walls. Just like we talked about in the Nether Fortress episode. Unfortunately, when you find corridors that lead to walls that look like that, it's most likely a dead end. If you want to, you could like double check mine into the walls a couple blocks, but I mean, I can guarantee it. The stronghold is over. It's done. However, back this way, we have another staircase that goes down. A staircase that goes down and spirals and spirals deeper and deeper. Hmm. So, back over this way, we have a staircase that I went to. Check done, that's good. And then that way, check done, that's good. I think I got that whole wing. Moving back over this way, this is the way to the skeleton spawner. I'll mark that like that. Let's go over here and see what we got. I, I gotta find an altar chest sooner or later. Iron doors. Inside of your stronghold, you're gonna find iron doors. Sometimes there is buttons on the walls. You can open uh, the doors with the buttons, like that. Jail room. This is a room that you could find inside of the stronghold. The jail room has a couple jail cells, but unfortunately, unless you're like coincidentally lucky and find a mob inside of the cell, there will be nothing inside of the jail cells. And we have another dead end. Alright, so at this point, using the map that I've laid out inside of my head of this structure, I've got it. This whole wing is all dead ends. I think that means I can backtrack and go up. When running around inside of a stronghold, you're looking for a small handful of things. Of course, you want to find that sweet loot. But it's not all just loot. You're also probably looking for a specific room, the portal room. You also should be looking for a library. <laughs> oh, we done it. I know exactly what's going to be inside of the library inside of one of these chests. That's right, friends. That's right. I told you I would do it eventually. Armor trim. Sweet, beautiful Minecraft 1.20. Deliciously tasting armor trim. And enchantments. The enchanted books that you can find inside of the stronghold can have basically every enchantment in the game other than two on them. Ooh, these are some good books right there. Look at that one. That's good. This one is really, really good. That's going to be wonderful for the trident, actually. Oh, or boots. Ooh, decisions. And that's perfect for the bow. That's going on it. 
Speaking of bows, these two bows that I found not too hot, and these books, I mean, those are nice too. Armor trim. Every single time you find the library inside of a stronghold in 1.20, you find a chest inside of it. There's guarantee armor trim in these chests. One in both chests. When it comes to loot inside of a stronghold, there is a handful of good things that you could find. Enchanted books and armor trim being some of them. If you're a little bit more lucky, you could also perhaps find a golden apple and maybe even a music disc too. Another great thing about the stronghold is the blocks it's built out of. All over the stronghold, you're gonna have a lot of stone bricks, it's wonderful. And inside of the library, so many books. If you need more books for an enchanting setup, well, this is gonna be the way to go. I will leave the library alone, preserve it, and come back later. I love how close this is to the spawner, too. This is gonna be such a nice outpost later on. I mean, like, look, I feel like with a, such a good stronghold, we legally kind of have to set up an outpost here, right? What do you guys think? So moving back over here, I, I want to mark the good wing. I mean, the bookshelves will give it away, but a cobblestone right there, 100%. That means spawner and bookshelves over there. Let's go back over this way down the staircase. What do we have? Hmm. Another jail and a crossroads room. Or at least a, a room, very nice gold door. A room that I'm gonna call the crossroads room. I don't know the technical name, but hoo hoo. This is an altar chest. Inside of the stronghold, in the altar chest, you could also, if you're lucky, find armor trim. But the odds are definitely not guaranteed whole lot lower chance hmm moving around here the stronghold gets really busted up and broken this is quite strange generation but i think it'll be fine let's backtrack and go through this door door number two through door number two we have even more iron doors and a creeper Ooh, explosive just stay away from me lad no both of you all of you Ooh, and silverfish Let's talk about those. So the stronghold is some kind of strange ancient structure. Inside of this thing, you'll have trap blocks. If you break the trap blocks, which are actually kind of hard to tell, but basically they just break quicker. But if you break the trap blocks, there could be stone bricks all over the place. Silverfish will come out of them. These infested blocks are infested with silverfish and silverfish are not exactly nice. It's a bad mob. It'll deal damage to you, but not very much. The silverfish gets a little bit more dangerous, to be honest, in, like, large numbers. If you have, like, a lot of silverfish swarming you, it could be, like, potentially pretty dangerous. So here we have another interesting room. This one is just, like, this got ominous vibes all over the thing to me. It's weird. It's like a strange altar in the middle of the room with torches. It doesn't necessarily signify anything. It's just weird. And so it looks like down that way, with that weird altar thing, it's just more dead ends, unfortunately. Let's backtrack and go back this way. I know there's more. Moving back over here, I can hear like a million and a half mobs. The mobs sometimes could be a giveaway that there's more of the fortress that you have to check out, or it could always just be a giveaway that there's a lot of caves nearby that are dark and mobs have spawned in them. Hmm, altar chest, please. Trim? Oh, oh, beautiful trim. We're lucky today. Oh, that's amazing. All ah, right, first the Eye of Ender, next up the trim, and third up the second library of the day. Yes, wonderful. By the way, cobwebs, an uncraftable item. It's not a great idea to break them with a sword. Instead, mine them with shears. You'll get the item. Then you could use them in a build later on. Use them in a armor later on. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> armor trim. Four of them. That's a full set. Now let's take a look at this. Flame and... Ooh, 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 ooh. Great. All over the place. So when it comes to uh, looting the stronghold, taking all the loot home, admittedly, I did kind of forget one giant component. That's going to be an ender chest. At this point in the game, before the end, the best way to... Oh, that's terrifying. I hate the door breaking noise. Zombies will do that sometimes. <laughs> that, that scares me. Anyways, at this point in the game, before the end, the best way to expand your inventory is with a little thing called the ender chest. I didn't make it. We'll talk about it later, though. Five pieces of armor trim. That's going to mean enough pieces of armor trim for a full set of armor and one trim that I don't even use up. Like, I just hold it later on. <laughs> that's wonderful. Going back up this way, that thing marks all of the good stuff that we found, which means over this way, I should have the staircase to leave the stronghold. What I think I want to do, really quick, yes, over here. Eventually, we'll be coming back over to this stronghold, then definitely heading over to the end from this thing. When I come back over to the stronghold to use what it's actually here for, I'll pick up all of these things. So conveniently here, it looks like I have a hallway that I never went down, and it stretches back towards where I just was. Let's go down this hallway and see what's up. We get a staircase that goes down, we get doors and zombies. Hmm, I wonder if that's what I was hearing, with the zombies smashing a door down. Unfortunately, this darkness, oh. Never mind, I take it back. This is not unfortunate. I was gonna say, there, there's lava in that room, and it makes it really bright. Oh, we did it. Oh, we did it, we found the wonderful room. It's gonna always have a spawner, be careful. But it's also gonna have a portal with eyes that we need to load up into it. Looks like I need 11. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and speaking of 11, oh, no way. Uh, anyway, silverfish spawner inside of this room. It's potentially dangerous. This could cause a large amount of silverfish to break out of the walls. So break it if you want. I think I kind of want to save it, though. After all, I'm going to come back here and set up an outpost for sure. 
And so just like that, we've done it. It looks like straight off from the entrance if I have known and just went straight out that whole time. <laughs> That's amazing to know. And it's going to make it really easy to get back into the portal next time. But before next time, let's finish looting this boy. Let's go. And so at this point in our stronghold run today, leaving no door left unbroken, no corridor left unlit, and no chest left unbroken, I think we just about done it. I'm pretty sure I've seen every single corner, corridor, and hallway inside of this entire stronghold. All right, so for our loot run today, I mean, I didn't take every single piece of loot here, but the good books, ooh, there are so many good books. I think the most important one for me to take home with me is going to be that. Armor trim, 100%. I'm not leaving you here, baby. You gotta come with me. Now, just to make sure I don't make any mistakes here next episode and forget to bring these back with me, I'm gonna leave all of my extra Eye of Ender right here in a chest inside of the stronghold. To break my way out of the stronghold, I'm gonna need to break that fence gate, which is gonna let water pour down. If I break this block right here, then when I break these blocks right here, then the fence gate right up here, water should only pour straight down and mess up none of the torches down below. That's gonna make it really easy, or at least a little bit easier, for me to get in and out of the structure. This stronghold, one of Minecraft's oldest structures, but also one of the most important ones. As we talked all about today, it's really not too hard to find a stronghold. Pretty straightforward. Once you find the thing and actually break your way into it, as long as you're careful and maybe use the structure's features to your advantage, closing doors when you get overwhelmed with mobs, it's not that bad to loot too. Considering the fact that our stronghold is out here in the middle of the ocean and could definitely get lost really, really easily, I'm going to make this pillar. I don't think there's any way in the world that I lose track of this pillar. The pillar signifies that at the bottom of the ocean, I got a tunnel down. My friends, officially, next episode, oh, it's time. Big shout out, patron gang, Austin B, Andrew H, Gabriel Y, Fire Dragon 19, Empress MC, and the Great Vegeta. If you love this world and you want to see the episodes early, check out my Patreon. If you're looking for world downloads, then tap that join button right here on the channel. Oh, and that number one Nether Fortress tip, today's comment of the day. I saw a lot of really amazing tips in a comments of the Nether Fortress episode. Chef's kiss to all of you. One that I saw a couple times though, that kind of blew my mind because I always forget about. Barter with the piglins for fire resistance potion. Oh, that is so smart. Let's make this a trend on any of these episodes where there's a topic. Put more tips down in the comments. I love it. Anyways, it has been me, Waddles, and I will see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.